G'day, welcome back to another video. Mick here again. In this video, we're going to be building this Kyosho Phantom EP four wheel drive. Should be fun. Anyway, before we get into that, I'll show you what uh, electronics I've got to go in it. So, for the steering servo, we've got the uh, Fataba S9670SV. Should be pretty cool. And for the receiver, got the uh, R202GF. Nothing too extravagant. It's only, uh, yeah, basically to run around a little track. I'm not a racer. <laughs> so I'll use that with the uh, Fataba 4PX. Should be pretty cool. And for the motor, gonna use the Le Mans 480T slash 480S, whatever color we wanna go with. But I'm going to go with the uh, the 480T colour, the green, to, to match the car. And for the speed controller, we're going to use the uh, Kyosho Le Mans 240S. So they should pair up pretty nicely. So in this video, I'm not going to do the body. I'll do that in another video. Um, I'll just get it up to a rolling chassis with electrics in it. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Alrighty, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so on to step one. We're going to put the uh, front hubs together and you'll notice this uh, this one here is a left hand thread. It actually goes on the right side of the car but yeah it's a left hand thread and you'll see it's got a little groove on the on the axle there so you can tell it apart from the, the standard one and they give you a little tool. So you're going to cut the center part out of there and you can do up your wheel nuts. There's another little spanner on the back and a couple of little spanner fittings on each end of that, sockets, whatever you like to call them. <laughs> and there you go. There's our front hubs all done. They look pretty sweet, I reckon. Alrighty, we'll move on to the front end. So from there we can move on to step two, where we open bag B. And I've assembled all that gear, it's all ready to go. So straight up to uh, step three. Putting the hubs on. So it's all done. Here we go, it's looking pretty nice. Now for the screws in the top and the bottom there that hold the hubs on, you need some thread lock. So I use some of the, uh, some Kyosho stuff I had left from another kit. Anyway, yeah, so they don't supply that with the kit. Bit of a bummer, ah well, whatever. <laughs> and don't forget to grease your, uh, your axles and stuff, you know. Alrighty, so in step four, we've got some measuring to do. And also in step five. So step four is assembling the servo saver. So I've already done that. And you've just got to make sure the uh, adjusting nut is three millimeters away from the top of the post there, like so. And I've already measured mine and it is, so it's all good. And we also got to measure the uh, little steering linkage at the top there. That needs to be 11.5 millimeters in the center and the tie rods need to be 17.8. So we're all good. Okay, in step six, we're putting the servo saver and stuff on. We're putting the, uh, the front on the chassis and putting the body mounts on. So there we go. That's all done. So that's how he looks underneath. Yeah, all coming together very nicely. The uh, tie rod ends, kind of hard to push on. I pushed them on with my fingers. Didn't want to, you know, mince them up with uh, pliers or anything like that. I do have some, uh, I do have some ball pliers here. But yeah, they just didn't fit. These are a bit too small. Alrighty, we'll move on to the back now. Alrighty, so step eight, we're on to building the diff. And this little collar right here, you'll notice it's got a grub screw in it and it goes into this little indent in the axle. I found put your grub screw in just a little bit, slide it up here and then tighten it just a smidge so it's just kissing the uh, axle and you'll find the, uh, the indentation there and then you can tighten it up. Anyway, so the diff goes together pretty simple. No real issues. Um, yeah, you just got to 
tighten this nut up only enough so it moves smoothly and that's it without any play so yeah well, it looks pretty good alrighty so we can put the uh, rear end on the car now alrighty so that's step nine done here we go only thing you need to look for here these little plastic cups that you put in there for the bearing make sure there's a it's got B and A on this side uh, just make sure the A and the B is at the top that's about it coming together quite nicely starting to look like a real car alrighty now I'll get the uh, the diff and the rear axle in there and there we go we've got the whole rear end together pretty much beautiful now we can move on to putting the motor in Man, isn't that pretty? Alrighty, so I've got the motor in now. Set the gear mesh. Tighten up the motor screws and the pinion. Alrighty, now we can get on to putting the top plate on and the radio. Alrighty, so in step 11 you put the, uh, the servo in. So that's all done. As you can see, all ready to go. I like the little uh, aluminium mounts, they're pretty cool. Anyway, uh, and you, moving on to step 12. So we put the body posts on for the back. And uh, these little grommets, they're a complete pain to get in. <laughs> Not easy at all. I ended up using a reasonably big um, hex key and basically push it in as you go around. Trying not to scratch the, uh, the top there. Anyway, they came up alright. But yeah, a bit of a pain to put in. Probably the worst part of the build. So now it's time to fit up the ESC. And I figure it's a good time to have a look at the uh, nice packaging that Kyosho gives you for it. Very nice. Alrighty, so we've got the ESC in there and the top top plates on. Very good. This nut on the front, you just gotta make sure it's level with the top of the screw there. That's as far as they want you to tighten it. All good. Anyway, so the ESC is under there using the uh, these mount holes are for this ESC. If you don't have one of these, you can use double-sided tape under there. Anyway, so now I have to solder up the motor wires. So I'll get onto that. Now before I do that, you'll notice the motor wires basically stick into the uh, battery area down there. So to keep them neat, I've put a cable tie around the uh, top of the speed controller there. Just to keep them against the top of the speed controller there. And uh, yeah, so they're not hanging around in front of the battery when you're trying to slip it in. Okay, so soldering up the motor wires there, I was a bit worried about uh, solder splatter getting all over the car and the motor. <laughs> you know, the flux tends to spit sometimes, so to avoid that I've wrapped the whole car in rags and only got the bit exposed that I need to. Alrighty, and that's it, motor wires are all soldered in. Came out pretty good I think. Now you'll notice I brought the, uh, the wires up this way instead of up the centre or around, around to the right there. In the manual it says take them around to the right or up the centre, whatever you like to call it. <laughs> Reason I didn't do that is because on the ESC we've got A over here, B in the middle and C on this side. And you get up to the motor and you've got A, B, C. Now that means if I come up this way I've got to cross them over halfway. So yeah, it doesn't look very neat. So hopefully it'll be fine this way and uh, yeah, we'll be all good. It may interfere with the body, but yeah, we'll, we'll see and uh, cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> now we're on to putting the battery in and they say to use glass tape to hold your battery in. Like that. 
But yeah, I'm not gonna do that because uh, yeah, I don't have a roll of glass tape. <laughs> and if I wanna take my battery out, I gotta keep replacing it. So you can get a, a roll of uh, Velcro tape like that. This stuff, uh, RC Mart, sent out to me with a few orders. I've uh, got a handful of them there somewhere. <laughs> So anyway, I just cut it to around 17 centimeters long and then just uh, using the ruler, took about three millimeters off the side because this stuff is 15 mil wide and the slot in the in the back or in the both sides of the chassis is only 12 mil. So you just got to trim it up the side and you know, you're kind of left with that. And uh, yeah, I just kind of trimmed up the end so it looks a little bit better. And that's it. Alrighty. Alrighty, what I'm doing now is trying to hide the wiring for the, uh, the servo on the ESC. So I put some aluminium tape under the uh, on the top of the bottom deck of the chassis there. Switch will go up here somewhere, I think. And uh, the receiver will go against that back panel under there. Yeah, and there should only be a small amount of wire tucked in the back. Anyway, I think that's going to be quite neat. There is a gap above the battery when it sits in, so I'll use the aluminium tape, you know, so the battery doesn't rub against the servo wires, but it's not going to touch it anyway. So it'll just help it out, you know, when you put the battery in and out. Alrighty, I'll put the receiver in the back, and uh, then it'll be time to put the chain on. So there's the ESC wire there. Yeah, that was great fun getting that cable tie down in there. <laughs> now, just to make the receiver and the receiver wire look a little bit neater, I just cut that slot out of the uh, double-sided tape there. So it should fit pretty flat against the uh, the backboard down there. Yeah, and the wire will just stick out the top. Alrighty, that's our receiver in. Got the antenna coming out the center here. I think that looks a lot neater. Yeah, there we go, got him plugged in down the bottom and uh, wiring's all tidied up down there. Now we can put the chain on. Alrighty, so that's our chassis pretty much finished. I brought the battery wires up the side there at the front. Put a little cable tie in there just to keep them neat. And a cable tie just loose over there just to hold the battery cable. Um, it's loose enough where I can get the uh, the plug out, out of there to change the battery. So there we go. It's all done. That's our receiver wiring and stuff down there. All pretty neat, I think. Now I've put the chain on. I ended up taking an extra link out of that. Now they do say in the manual you need at least three millimeters under the battery there. I don't actually have that. I have kind of zero, but it's not very tight at all. It's just kind of resting there. I figure it'll, it'll stretch, you know, pretty quick. Uh, with the extra, with that extra link in there, it had like six mil or so. So it was just too floppy for me. So that's it. I can put the wheels on and call the chassis done. Now you might notice there's an extra wire going across the centre there now, to the motor. Yeah, that's because I forgot the uh, sensor cable, so I had to pull it all apart and put that in. Oh well, moving on. So I'll give it a bit of a test. Steering's good. Beautiful. Seems good to me. Alrighty, so that's it for our Kyosho Phantom build. For the chassis anyway. In a video coming soon, I'll do the body and uh, paint the driver, fit the decals and all that, and uh, yeah, put the body on and she'll be all done. We can take it for a run. So I'll leave you with the standard video montage at the end there so you can uh, check it out up close. Alrighty, thanks for watching.